right, we're going to go ahead and call to order um, our public meeting and de declare that we have a quorum of six trustees. I'm in stereo. Um, all right, and uh, with that uh, quorum of six, it will take us to item C, receive a presentation related to the CSISD Texas Academic Performance Report, or TAPER, for the 2019-2020 school year. Mr. Martindale. It's uh, the Mrs. Perry show. Mm-hmm. Molly. All right. Thank you, Mr. Martindale. Members of the board this evening, as we do uh, every year, typically in January, uh, we are here for a public hearing related to the 2019-20 Texas Academic Performance Report, uh, otherwise and lovingly known as TAPER. So this report combines a number of details regarding uh, both district and campus performance in the area of academics, uh, as well as financials, and then some demographic information related uh, to our staff and our students and our programs. In the report that is published uh, online, you will find uh, star performance, typically, uh, with the understanding that uh, we did not assess students statewide on star in spring of 2020, uh, as well as attendance rates, dropout rates, graduate information, other measures of college readiness, uh, such as performance on uh, admission exams like ACT, SAT, TSI, uh, dual credit course completion, AP performance, career tech, licensure and college enrollment. So uh, there really is a, a depth and breadth of information in this report uh, that can be very useful for us to, to monitor our overall progress as a district. Uh, additionally, that district profile uh, does include uh, a lot of demographic information for both our, our staff, students, and programs. Uh, in the TAPER requirements, we as a district uh, gather and compile components that are not part of that initially published report into a more comprehensive report and then publish that on our website, uh, including our, our financial standard reports for PEMS, which uh, would most recently be that 2018-19 year, um, our accreditation stat status, our performance objectives for each campus, uh, our determination status for special education, uh, a report on any violent or criminal incidents that occurred on our campuses and student performance in post-secondary institutions. We, uh, of course, uh, look at this uh, component through uh, these lenses that we've just talked about, uh, including not only star results and participation, but post-secondary readiness and demographics, uh, and ultimately have requirements to publicly share those. And so tonight's public hearing is one component of that uh, requirement to share. Uh, we also have the information published on our website and notify our parents with a statement on uh, our students' report cards that it is available. So as I mentioned, uh, due to the impact of COVID-19, we did not administer STAR in spring of 2020. If you happen to look at our, our TAPER report, though, you'll notice uh, about half of it is STAR data, and that is because they did report uh, the 2018 and 2019 STAR data in this current TAPER. So with that, we'll shift to post-secondary readiness. We're going to hit some of the, the highlights in this report. Uh, for those of you who have already perused the report online, you'll, you'll know there's a lot more than just uh, what we're covering this evening, but we've really hit some of the things that we think are, are of most value uh, in really identifying and monitoring how our, our performance is in this particular area. Uh, so first of all, our class of 2019, which is the most recently uh, fully completed and uh, submitted data. I know that sounds like it's been a while ago, but the, uh, the information is in arrears for some components. Uh, did graduate 888 students that year. Uh, our four-year graduation rate, meaning those students who entered as freshmen and completed uh, within four years, was 92.9%. Now, that does not mean uh, that the remainder were dropouts because we do have some students that continue on to complete credits uh, or are going through alternate avenues. That rate of 92.9 does exceed the state rate of 90%. That's been very consistent for us to exceed the state rate in that area. And for that same class of 2019, uh, we did have 3.2% of, uh, of those students who, who were classified as a dropout. Uh, now, it's important to know that those students didn't necessarily uh, completely drop out of school. Some of them did uh, complete um, their high school equivalency exams, but those students are considered dropouts for the purposes of the system. Uh, that rate does um, look a little better compared to that state rate of almost 6%, though. 
When we look at college career or military readiness, this is a, an increasingly important component of what we accomplish as a school district. Uh, this was relatively new, just probably uh, about four years ago, added to our accountability system. And there are a number of ways that students can achieve uh, college career or military readiness, uh, otherwise known as CCMR. Uh, in fact, I believe there's about 13 to 15 different ways a student can achieve that uh, through either performance on assessments, participation in uh, and performance on AP exams. Uh, they can also earn that through uh, licensures that are on the approved list for CTE or uh, enlistment in the military. So we've seen this rate statewide increase as it's been a new uh, metric that, that was introduced into the system. Uh, and it's become increasingly important as House Bill 3 in the last legislative session uh, now incorporates bonuses for funding related to CCMR, especially for those students uh, who may have more challenges in earning that, those students who are uh, economically disadvantaged or have uh, special uh, education needs. So we are still exceeding the state rate, but this is an area that we're monitoring closely and in fact we've actually invested in some software to help automate that monitoring process and better identify students who have not yet earned their CCMR and uh, tailor ways that we can help them achieve that before graduation. So continuing to think about uh, post-secondary readiness, uh, when we look at our graduates or our students, uh, especially in all of grades 9 through 12 that are uh, completing dual credit courses uh, for that 18-19 school year, that was 38.5%, which is uh, quite a bit lower than that state rate of 44.6. However, what you'll notice if you continue looking to the right is we have a, a much greater percentage of our students who are participating in the AP program and so our graduates were at 37 points or sorry 36.7 in class of 2019 uh, that had scored at least a three or more on uh, an AP exam and uh, as we look at AP a little more closely you'll see that 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 is a much heavier emphasis for many of our students relative to dual credit College ready is not the same as college and career and military ready. It is a subset of those students, specifically those who perform uh, well on tests like ACT, SAT, uh, TSI, and are indicating that they are ready academically to go to college through those methodologies. Uh, we well exceed the state rate in that particular area at 65.4% uh, relative to 53% across the state. Uh, coherent sequence of graduates for our career technical education programs is something we've been uh, keeping a closer eye on over these last several years as well. Um, you can see here that the state rate is 59% uh, and we're at 48%. Point three. Uh, we actually saw some really good gains in that this year. Uh, what I would um, want to clarify for you all though, because you may be asking yourself, what does that mean to be a coherent sequence of grad? Uh, that during the course of your high school uh, career, and that could include courses that you took prior to high school, if they were CTE classes for high school credit, is that you took two or more courses uh, for three or more credits in a coherent sequence, meaning you didn't jump around from different uh, subject areas. In the area of advanced placement, I really want to highlight this. As you all are probably well aware, uh, we are an AP honor roll district and have been for quite some time uh, for not only our performance on the AP exams, but also our participation. 32.8% uh, of our juniors and seniors uh, took uh, at least one AP exam relative to the state rate of 25.2. Uh, and then those participation rates were most uh, uh, notable in English language arts and then social studies, math, and science. Where we really outshine our, our peers around the state is in the area of performance though, uh, with over 80% of our students meeting the criterion, again, of three or more uh, score on one of those assessments uh, relative to that state rate of 51%. So that is an area we're certainly very proud of. Shifting gears to those SAT and ACT uh, tests, our participation and performance for class of 2019 uh, is indicated here. So we'll go left to right. Uh, we have our participation rate, 73.9% of our students uh, graduating in the class of 19. 
19, I'm sorry, 2019 uh, took SAT or ACT, uh, you'll notice the state rate is a little higher than that. And part of the reason for that is that many districts require all students to take those exams, where as uh, here we, we make that a choice. It is optional which exam you would like to take and if you would like to take it. Um, we did, though, show a, a much greater level of performance with 69% uh, of our st students scoring at or above the criterion established relative to the state rate of 36.1. You may have heard in recent years that uh, statewide and even nationally, SAT scores are going down. Well, that's very much relevant to that greater pool of students taking the SAT as more districts do require uh, all students to, to be assessed with that administration. Then looking at ACT, uh, I'm sorry, SAT average score, uh, our average score for class of 2019 was uh, 1165 with a state average of 1027. And then ACT, our average score was 24.3 relative to 20.6. So similar to AP, uh, we do have a, a much higher rate of performance for our students uh, relative to their peers around the state of Texas. We're going to now shift gears into staff and student profiles. So for October 2019 snapshot, uh, we had 13,856 students enrolled. And for that year, our attendance rate was 96.4. Uh, we see a very consistent trend with that attendance rate hovering a little bit above the state rate uh, year over year. Distribution of students uh, by ethnicity. Uh, this has changed somewhat over the years in, in certain areas, uh, but we continue to have uh, just a little over half of our students classified uh, as white, uh, with the next largest group uh, being our students who are Hispanic, then African American, uh, and then uh, while a smaller group, we have a lot of diversity within our uh, students who are Asian, Pacific Islander, American Indian, and two or more races. Looking at special populations, uh, for the 2019 snapshot, we were at 38% uh, students who were economically disadvantaged, which uh, if you've been watching our trends, you'll know that's a little higher than it has been in years past, and we attribute that uh, somewhat to the addition of full day pre-K and adding more students into our programs who are eligible in that particular area. Bilingual uh, ESL is a, a program that we continue to see growth with last year's uh, rate being 11.7%, 39.3% at risk. Uh, our special education numbers uh, continue to grow. We saw several percent uh, growth year over year here and uh, were uh, most recently in the snapshot of 2019 at 122 and then Section 504, who are our students who have disabilities but are not eligible under IDEA at 9.9, and then 5.5% of our students are identified with dyslexia. Uh, I do think it's important to note that students with dyslexia are often also classified as either 504 or special education, depending on their individualized needs, but students in special education are not also classified under 504, even though they do uh, have those same uh, protections under the law regarding dis dis disability discrimination. So we do have over 20% uh, percent of our students who uh, are eligible as student with disabilities with both special education and 504. Shifting to our staff profiles, uh, in 2019, we uh, reported 1,945 total staff, uh, with uh, just over half of those being comprised of our teachers. Uh, the next largest group being auxiliary, then educational aides, uh, and then professional support. Our uh, campus administration uh, comprises only 2.4% of our staff. That would include both principals and assistant principals. Uh, and then our central administration uh, is less than 1% at 0.9% of our total staff. Looking a little more closely at uh, that classification of uh, employees who comprise uh, more than half of our total staff, our teachers, uh, probably uh, Something that is of interest is we have 986 teachers in uh, the 2019-20 school year, and uh, just over 30% of those hold an advanced degree, meaning a master's or a doctorate, uh, which is significantly higher than that state rate of 24.5. Our average year of experience is 12.5 um, relative to the state of 11.1, and our turnover 
continues to uh, to be under that state rate at 14.6. I think it's important to note on this one as well, that doesn't necessarily mean that 14.6% of our teachers left the district. Those, those are individuals who were teachers one year and not classified as teachers the next. So they could have been uh, moving into a specialist position, a coaching position, an administrative position, uh, just leaving the teaching profession even within the same district would count as turnover. So, on the left, you can see a distribution of the years of experience of those, te of those teachers, uh, with 39% being beginning. So about 38 of our new teachers last year were actually first year teachers. Uh, and then we've got a, a fairly even uh, distribution around the bend, which is good because we want to have uh, both you know, teachers who are beginning their careers in the middle of the careers and maybe uh, more nearing retirement so that we have a good rate of turnover as teachers uh, move out of the profession and move into the profession. Uh, and with that, I would like to just remind um, you all as well as the public that these results are uh, available at our website, CSISD.org. Uh, and with that, uh, I would ask if we have any public comment. So without any public comment, any questions from here? Comments? Okay. Well, thank you so much. You threw some stats at us tonight. Yeah. Did my best. <laughs> you did very well. Okay, with that, uh, we will adjourn, and we'll be back in a few moments for our regular meeting.